how fear cripples us. So many people I'm seeing today, especially in the last six months, are full of fear, full of anguish. When you are fearful, something happens to you. You get angry. Notice when people are fearful about telling their partner the truth about something, the moment they have fear, instead of saying it nicely, they start to get angry with their partner. <clears throat> Or instead of saying things nicely, they get angry with their friends. You see, fear distorts our thinking. So what should we do about this fear? How do we work with this? The way we work with it is basically what Sri Patanjali teaches us in Sutra 2 of the Yoga Sutras of Sri Patanjali. Yogas Chitta Vritti Narodaha which means the restraint of the modifications of the mind stuff is yoga. And then in Sutra 3, and then the seer abides in its own true nature. What, this, what does this mean? When we learn to watch our thoughts, when we learn to observe our feelings, our emotions. For example, when the emotion fear comes up, look at it rather than ah, get yourself all worked up or get the heart pumping or start to think what is going to happen tomorrow and start to think about the future and start to worry about the future because worry joins in with fear. Stop a moment. Stop a moment. This is the yoga practices. Stop. Take a slow, deep breath. Because if you don't, the fear will take you over. And of course, the cortisol levels will just keep going and you'll keep on going into fight or flight. And when you keep going into fight or flight, the body overreacts. And then what happens? Your immune system weakens and you're always on edge and then your health will suffer. And then you'll say, you see, it is because of the disease. Sri Patanjali tells us, <laughs> yes, disease can cause mental disturbances, but they're warning signs. These are obstacles. There are obstacles in our path. We need to overcome them. And he tells them we can overcome these obstacles when we focus on one thing with a steady mind. With a steady mind. So for the yogi, what are we looking at? Yoga, the word yoga means union. Unite what with what? our lower mind with our higher mind or we call it the higher self or you can call it God or you can call it Jesus and you can call it Moses you can call it Shiva whatever you choose to call it but to unite the lower mind with the higher mind the higher mind is the spiritual work our mission on earth is to realize that we are spiritual beings only experiencing a walk in the park on this earth. <laughs> and I say a walk in the park because this is how we should look at it. A walk in a park, not fearfully. Think about the park on a rainy day, the trees rustling, lightning in a storm, and other days when you have blue skies and everything is so smooth and peaceful. And our lives will always be like this because this is the way of our world so why are we gripped with fear because we don't spend enough time with uniting with our higher self with understanding who we really are you know five minutes a day doesn't do it we had a raj yoga foundation teacher training course uh, the last few weekends and you know everybody left repeating these very precious words. Practice becomes firmly grounded when well attended to for a long time without a break and with all your heart. What does that mean? 
You practice watching your mind first. This is called dharana or concentration. You practice watching what you are thinking. Now, once you know what you are thinking, the next step is what is your goal? What is your goal? What do you want out of life? For me, it was easy. I wanted peace. <laughs> I made my life really easy. What disturbs my peace? I learned nothing disturbs my peace more than my own reaction to outside happenings. Things happen on the outside to stimulate our senses. And if we are weak, we will be stimulated and we lose our balance. But if we know and we understand that the senses are there for us to enjoy life, but not in the extreme, because any extreme brings suffering. So make your goal really clear. What do you want to achieve in life? When you look at Okay, fear is filling up my life. Notice what happens to you. You stop, you can't function well. You're irritated, you're screaming at everybody. You're blaming everybody out there. You're blaming, like I said, for example, COVID, what's happening now. Sri Patanjali warns us, these are the obstacles in your life. Watch out for them. What are the obstacles? He talks about it, disease. Disease is a huge obstacle. When people are sick, they become frightened. Or if they hear about disease, <gasps> am I going to die? What is the root cause of that? Fear of death. So disease. And then when you are not well also, then you get, you know, doubt, doubt, doubt about, you know, is it worth me doing this practice? You know, I'm trying so hard. I'm getting nowhere. Never give up on you. Got it? <laughs> Never give up on anybody. Because the moment doubt comes in, it eats at you. I can't, I can't, I can't, maybe this is so bad. Then the worry comes in and the fear keeps going. No, I've done this before. I know when I was fearful, I would take a few breaths, I sit, and be just observe life what is life observe that really at this moment this present moment all is well what's going where is it not well it is not well here in my brain it is not well here in my heart but look everything else is well Everything else is well, so where is the fear coming from? Inside of you. So the work is working inside of us. So trust yourself. That's where the doubt comes in. I can't do it. I'm not good enough. It's low self-esteem. God doesn't love me. I am being punished. What a lot of nonsense. Take away that conversation with yourself instead. I am loved. I am good enough. I can get through this. This will pass. You know, the divine is in me as it is in everybody else. We're all part of that consciousness. And when I touch this divinity, I am strong. My master always used to say, he said, Nelly, and I have that sign of it in my office. Trust in God and fear do not go together. That means we don't trust, we have doubt. Fear happens even when you sometimes trust in the universe and you trust in the spirit. Fear does come because we're very human. So what do we need to do? We need to look at it, confront it and have a good laugh. Lighten up, lighten up. That's why I always suggest listening to music when you get really down because mind working against mind sometimes can be extremely difficult. No matter how much you understand yoga, the mind is arguing with the mind. So you have to transcend that. You have to transcend the good and evil. You have to just find the peace and watch this. And how do you know this is possible? Because it is. It's kind of like when you go up on a plane and when you're going through the clouds, everything is gray. But once the plane goes above the clouds and you look down, 
everything is smooth but there's still clouds up there you transcended those clouds and that's what it is to watch the mind of course when you watch it observe it you become the witness when you become the witness an automatic distancing happens it's almost that you suddenly stepped away from yourself and didn't make it so personal to you you stepped away then you are able to witness hmm the fear has gripped my mind it's going at 100 360 degrees it's not stopping turning like a wheel within a wheel you can watch it you can watch it and then you take a deep breath and then you focus on the moment right at this moment as Sri Patanjali said one single thing so for me the mantra is so precious and I've been practicing the mantra for over what 30 35 years now 35 years my initiation mantra so every time the mind goes into fear mode the mantra comes up and again that gives you distancing if you don't believe in a mantra choose anything that is very precious to you you know uh, many of my catholic students like to say this too shall pass and i love it i love it this too shall pass i used it a lot when um I had pneumonia in December. I got really, really, really sick. I think I had COVID then. I couldn't breathe. I thought I couldn't make it home. I'm an asthmatic, so, but I'm much better after practicing yoga, so much better. So while I was at home and taking a, a breath and I would just think, well, this too shall pass. And if I survive, great. And if I don't survive, I'm going home. But that fear wasn't there. It wasn't there. I really, after the years of practice, I realized that I am spirit. And yes, everybody around me was scared, but I wasn't frightened of being ill. And that was really so lovely. If the breath comes, I'll do everything to make it come. I will work. I will do some pranayama. I had nebulizers. So I just did the work that I could do. And if I don't breathe, breathe anymore, I don't breathe anymore. But why was I so comfortable with this situation that most people I find are so fearful of? Because of the years of practice. Because when you practice, you realize, really, this body is not yours. And this mind is not yours. And that everything is on loan. Once you realize this, then you start to live your life beautifully as best as you can because you know time is short and you could go tomorrow anything is possible so why not live each moment as if it's your last just doing that enriches your life getting up in the morning i know you it sounds crazy sometimes my partner laughs at me and i go if this was my last day how would I live it? How would I live it? How would you live it? I would love to live it with love, not with fear and not with worry, but you've got to train yourself, otherwise you can't do that. And then have you fulfilled your dreams? Or are you always procrastinating? Fear cripples people. I have heard people so many years, Nalani, oh, I would love to sing, or Nalani, I would love to paint, or Nalani, I would love to change my career but they're gripped by fear. They just don't dare. They're so scared. And year after year after year, the clock is ticking and I keep telling them, you're not getting younger. You better follow your inner voice. If it goes wrong, you can always come back, but don't waste your time. Fear is crippling you. It makes you freeze. And what are you worried about? As the Bhagavad Gita says, what have you brought that you are going to lose? We came with nothing. We will go with nothing. So what do you fear? What is your fear? It's society told us that when we don't have all those things that we will be miserable. 
But of course we need money to live. Of course we need food to live. Of course we need all those things. And, and so long as we have those things, we attract and, and, and appreciate them. If we can get up every morning and appreciate whatever we have, a cup of warm water, some little bread to eat, if you could just appreciate it, you are already without fear. Gratitude is that magic pill to take you away from fear. Fear is always feeling like a loss or something that may not be there tomorrow. You know, and I keep telling myself, yes, of course, this is normal. You know, you fear losing your family, you feel somebody going, but we all have to go one day. And what we fear is missing the pain. And in life, it's something all of us go through. We cannot avoid that pain. And how to live with pain is another way of yogic living, accepting pain for purification. What does that mean? When you suffer a lot, you change. You, you make sure you adapt, adjust, and accommodate. A master used to use this example. He would say, look at a piece of gold. The more you fire it and burn it, the purer it becomes. Many people I know have come to the path of searching for their spirit, their soul, their mission and in life. They come to this search because or through pain, because they have found that life has, we're full of suffering. Buddha says there is suffering, but there is a way out when we understand why cause and effect, what we put in is what we get out. But it's not about punishment. It is about cause and effect. It's a scientific law. The moment we come to this earth, this law is in, it's functioning. It's functioning because it's part of this earth. So let us go back to fear. I'd love to tell you a little story that my master used to tell. It's called the elephant and the boy. The king had a big elephant and every day they would take the elephant down to the river to drink some water but you know how elephants are their trunk goes from side to side and the attendant would have such a rough time taking this elephant to the water to drink one day a little boy was passing and he saw that elephant and he ran up to the elephant got hold of his trunk and said elephant you're coming with me to the water. And the elephant followed the boy to the water. Now, the boy and the attendant, the boy was really happy he could do that, and the elephant listened to the boy. Now, the attendant was shocked. How did this eight-year-old boy do this when we can't? So this happened for three or four days. And um, the attendant went back to the king and said to the king, he said, you know, we, we are so full of fear and worry as a human race. This young boy, this young boy goes to the elephant every day. And the reason why he can move the elephant, take the elephant to the river is because he has no fear and no worry. And the king says, well, I'm not sure if I agree with your analysis. I'd like you to do something to prove it. Let's introduce some fear and worry into this boy's mind and let's see if you're right or wrong. So the attendant went to the boy's house. He was brought up by his grandmother who always gave him everything he wanted. So he talked to the grandmother and the grandmother said, you know, she said, well, this boy is a happy-go-lucky boy. He's always happy. He gets what he wants. I feed him. He runs around the road. He talks to everybody. And he's just a lovely, kind, happy-go-lucky boy. And so the attendant say, do me a favor. For the king, because the king wants to test a theory. Tonight, when you make his dinner, 
please put very little salt in the food. And if he asks why the food doesn't have salt, tell him you don't have enough money to buy more salt. The grandmother said, really, the king wants me to do that? Yes, we'd like you to do that. The grandmother said, anything for the king. So that night, that boy came home and said, Granny, Granny, why is this food so tasteless? And the granny said, well, you know, salt is very expensive and I have to measure my salt so we have little, little, we need money to buy the salt and I don't have enough. Ah, no, I'll get you some salt. He ran to the little shop around the corner and he went to the, um, the shopkeeper and said, I want some salt for my grandmother. She needs salt. You can't have salt. You need to pay me. But I don't have money. Well, then you need to get money. What do I need to get money? You need to work. But I've never worked in my life. Well, in India, everybody works, so find work. So the boy was very disturbed. He went back to his grandmother and he said, Grandmother, I need to work to get money to buy salt so we can eat tasty food. The grandmother said, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, we'll talk about it tomorrow morning. So that boy all night is nervous, filled with fear. Where are we going to get the money? How am I going to work? I'm only so young. How can I help my granny? Will she be able to live? You know, all these thoughts all night in his mind. You all know the feeling when you're fearful or worried. It doesn't stop. The mind chatter doesn't stop. So anyway, next morning, he went to the road. And again, he saw that elephant and he did he just walked up to the elephant like he always did. And suddenly the elephant pushed him away. And then the attendant said, hmm, my theory was right. And he went back to the king and he said, you see, when you have fear and worry, even the animals can sense it. Everybody senses fear and worry. So, um, that story, when I was told this story many years ago, made me think a lot. It made me think that, um, for example, a lot of things that happened in my own life, the problems, etc., did I instigate them because of my fear and worry? If I had been calmer, would things have turned out better? And looking at my past, when I started this work of yoga, I could see Indeed, when I was filled with fear and worry, my reaction would be anger, blame. I would freeze and absolutely convince myself that I was the victim of other people's version of my life. So I allowed people to dominate my thinking process because I was fearful. So when I could clearly observe this in me, and how could I clearly observe this with me, in me? How do we do this? Is spending time with ourselves, watching ourselves. You know, I often say, what you don't like in others is normally what you yourself judge inside of you. You have that inside of you. Um, what the fears that you see people have when it triggers something in you, it means you probably have those fears intensely and they will cripple you. So observing them in, first of all, when you start to meditate, it's not so easy to keep the mind empty. I don't know how anybody can do that. It took me years. I, I often tell my students, it took me five years, I think, practicing every day for an hour, every day, to actually feel some stillness. I sat there day after day, I never stopped because I had faith. And as I sat there every day meditating, many good things happened during the period. Maybe I did not have full control of my fears, but a lot of my fears left me. 
And then when I started teaching yoga many years later, I saw my students were losing their fears, not only their fears, but their addictions to things outside. And because they were doing that, their lives became better. Their world became better. They became more peaceful. And I so understood these precious words, as you think, so it becomes. I have to do the work. I cannot expect anybody else to do the work for me. And this is what, you know, I try to tell people, do the work, it's beautiful. You know, gratitude is a lovely practice. Practice gratitude. When you get up in the morning and you're fearful, don't get angry with yourself. Don't get angry in the world, with the world, except I am fearful. I am, you are, do not deny it. Have a good cry if you need to, but don't blame anybody for it. The situation is happening for us to overcome it. It's an obstacle, as Sri Patanjali says, just an obstacle, as COVID-19 is an obstacle. Living in fear is the worst thing we can do to our immune system. We all know that fear and worry will break your immune system down. So what can we do, even though you have a little fear of the disease? What you do is there's proactive things you can do. It's great. You can have a lot of vitamin C, take some zinc, have vitamin D, go out in the sun, walk by the beach, go walking every day at least 40 minutes a day. If you can't, 20 minutes a day, that stimulates the body. Do some hatha yoga, build up your immune system. Do some pranayama, build it up. My master used to say continuously, if the immune system is strong, then it's hard for the disease to come through. Of course, if you have a immunity, then be careful. If you have a weakness that is uh, um, congenital or, you know, just uh, respiratory problems or heart problems or um, blood pressure problems, then you need to be really quite careful and just be vigilant. Just be vigilant, just be careful. You don't have to panic. If you're in a situation where you feel it could be dangerous, just leave. But you don't have to you know, isolate yourself for so long because what happens is fear makes you wanna do this. When you do this, all the muscles contract and then your heart isn't flowing, your body isn't flowing. Look at you, just here, oh. And even if you don't do physically, you are doing it internally. You are doing it internally. So you imagine what's doing it to your, what it is doing to your muscles of your body, your heart. It's going to affect you. This is why pranayama or the breathing practices are vital. That's why all the teachers say, learn to take a deep breath at this moment. 